In Lewis theory, we represent valence electrons with dots. Um, and what we get is we, we use the element symbol from the periodic table and we put dots around to represent the valence electrons and that's called a Lewis structure or a dot structure. There's some other names for it. I'll try to just call it a Lewis structure. And we need to remember that the number of valence electrons for the main group elements is equal to the group number, except for helium because he has to be an exception, right? So carbon, how many valence electrons does carbon have? Four. It has six electrons, but it has four valence electrons. Those are the ones in the highest principal energy shell. We learned that when we were talking about electron configurations. So let's, let's look at oxygen and draw a Lewis structure for oxygen. First, we're going to look at the electron configuration. So it's a review from chapter 9. So anybody want to take a stab at it? Let's do the whole thing. Well, it's going to start with 1s2, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at the periodic table and imagine those groups, right? The first two columns are the s group. So that one's full, 1s2. And then the next level, we get 2s2. And then over in the p block, how many electrons does oxygen have in that p block? Four, right? One, two, three, four. So 2p, four. These are the valence electrons, the highest n number. This is n equals 1. This is n equals 2. And so we have a total of six electrons in that level. And so when we write a Lewis structure for oxygen, we write the element symbol, and then we're going to put six dots around it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Six dots. Exactly where you put the dots doesn't matter. Any questions yet? Yes? Um, this might be just my ignorance, but um, I was doing natural chemistry mm -hmm. with Dr. Kane, and I know Emily has one in the mm -hmm. and I put one, but it said it was wrong, and I like, it said I had to put it like on the corner. Um, mastering chemistry can be really picky. Really, really picky. And when it comes to this stuff, it can be just infuriating. Um, so I think that's one we'll have to look at individually. It might have been referring to the sodium ion. Um, we'll have to look at that. So each dot is representing a valence electron. And we put the dots around generally no more than two per side. There's a top, a bottom, a right, and a left. And one of the reasons for this is so that you can just look at it and see how many dots there are without having to count. Just like you can look at dice, right? And we recognize the pattern so we don't have to get our finger out and count. So you put the dots in one at a time first and then you pair them up. And Mastering Chemistry is a real stickler on this one. When you draw something for me, I can't tell if you put them in what order or anything, um, but Mastering Chemistry cares a great deal about these things. What we learned from quantum mechanics is that atoms that have eight, eight valence electrons are particularly stable. All of the noble gases, except for helium, have eight valence electrons, right? And they are especially stable. They really don't react with much of anything. Eight valence electrons, or eight dots, is called an octet, just like eight people singing together is called an octet. So let's look at the first 10 elements in the periodic table. And write Lewis structures for them. So we need to know the number of valence electrons. How many valence electrons does hydrogen have? One. That should be easy. Hydrogen only has one electron. How about helium? Two. It's tempting to say it has eight because it's in group eight, but it only has two electrons. And I, I won't try to trick you. We, we don't see helium actually a lot in Lewis structures because it doesn't make compounds. Um, lithium. How many valence electrons does lithium have? One. Now, see, I could put it on the top. I put helium's, I'm sorry, hydrogen's one dot on the left. I could put lithium's on the top. It doesn't matter. How about beryllium? How many valence electrons? Two. How about boron? Three. You want to put them singly and then pair them up 
as you have to. How many does carbon have? Four. So carbon, one, two, three, four. I haven't had to pair anything up yet. Now how about nitrogen? Five. One, two, three, four, five. So there's a pair on top and one each on the sides. We already looked at oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just going to be different and put the two on top and two on bottom. Where the pairs are doesn't matter, but you don't want to do this. One, two, three, four, five, six. You, no circles. We're not going to make circles out of the dots. That's, that's not good. It's just really hard to look at. I don't think there's any better reason. Fluorine, how many valence electrons? Seven. It's in group 7A, seven, eh? seven valence electrons. So one, wrong thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think I've made my dots a little too large. Let's shrink them a smidge. What about neon? Eight valence electrons. One, two, three, four. Let's see if I can get these straight this time. Five, six, seven, eight. So when you put them in pairs, top, bottom, right, and left, then it's like looking at dice, and you can just look at it and see how many there are. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Yes? So the group number is equal to the valence electrons? Yes, for the main group elements. Main and that's the 1A, 2A, 3A group numbers. Okay. So, you know, group 18, if you have a periodic table that has group 18, just ignore the 1. Okay. Group 18 is also called group 8A, and all of those guys have 8 valence electrons, except for helium. So helium is stable with a duet of two electrons. Helium and hydrogen are the little baby brothers of the, electron, of the element family, right? And so they're exceptions to a lot of things. They can't handle eight valence electrons. Okay, so they, they don't even try. They're good with two. Their standards are low. So how do we represent bonds. I said this was about bonding theory. Well, a chemical bond in Lewis theory represents either sharing electrons or transferring electrons to get a stable electron configuration for the atoms. We've talked about them all wanting eight. How do they get eight? Well, they can transfer them. That's what happens in ionic bonds. There's a transfer of electrons. The metal says, oh, I want to get rid of these electrons. Here, you take them. They're yours now. And then we have an ionic bond. In covalent bonds, what does that prefix co mean? Sharing. Co-sleeping is sharing sleep. Actually, when you co-sleep with children, there's sometimes not a lot of sleeping that, that happens. Um, but co means share. Sharing valence electrons. So the electrons are shared. And um, we have something called the octet rule um, for the Lewis theory. In chemical bonding, atoms transfer or share electrons to obtain outer shells with eight electrons. And these little guys, hydrogen, lithium, and beryllium, follow the duet rule. They didn't even put helium in there because... Helium doesn't make any compounds. It doesn't make compounds with anything. So we're never going to draw a Lewis structure for helium except as an atom. So let's do some examples of this. Let's write the Lewis structures of magnesium and sulfur. Well, to write the Lewis structure, you're going to first write the element symbol. And then you have to figure out how many valence electrons does magnesium have? What group is it in? Group 2A. Two valence electrons. So draw two dots. You can draw them there. You can draw them like this. You can draw them like this. But don't pair them up, okay? So 
any of those are acceptable, and there's others as well. Any questions about that one? How about sulfur? How many valence electrons does sulfur have? Six. So we need six dots. One, two, three, four, five, six. Not too hard, huh? Questions? <laughs>